Hey y'all, today we are going back to basics and I'm covering UI inside of the Unity editor, specifically in Unity 6 and really with the design philosophy of Unity uh, moving forward from here. So the idea of contextual menus and customizable UI and menu systems. So without further ado, let's dive in. And I'll start off with the UI of the Unity Hub. So if you're new to Unity, you just got the Hub installed theoretically. If not, that's where I would start, is installing Unity Hub. I'm in version 3.9.1. And essentially, you're going to see a list of projects, or if you've not installed the editor yet, it could be a blank list here. So what I'm going to do is go down to Installs next. And this is where all installations of the editor are. You can get into any official releases as well as any pre-releases here. So I'm going to go back to all. You also have learn and community for kind of messages and updates and news and tutorials. I want to dive straight into the UI for the editor itself, though. So let's go ahead and make our project and we'll take a look. So I'm going to hit new project up here in the top. You can browse between your different versions. Uh, that is one thing that could trip you up a little bit is um, when doing this process, it will reset to the most recent LTS. So if you're working inside of like a Unity 6 as it's still not released as the LTS, um, it's going to default back. So you're going to need to manually set this. So when you come over here, you have a bunch of highlighted options for the types of kind of templates that you can either install or just run with. Anything that is not highlighted is installable, but is not installed. So if I wanted the VR multiplayer sample, for example, if I were doing a collaborative viewer in a headset, that's where I would start is I would install this. Just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to go into a universal 3D core scene. Uh, essentially, without going too deep into it, you have universal render pipeline and high definition render pipeline which are the two scriptable render pipelines. So SRP next to URP and next to HDRP. That's what these are. Um, so I'm going to open up the URP, which Universal is typically for mobile and uh, less robust hardware devices. So I'm going to call this URP Unity 6 UI. And for now, we don't have to go deep into this, but this is where it's going to install the project. This is the Unity organization that you belong to, um, or you can select a different one. And then you can either connect it to your Unity cloud and you can connect to Unity version control. So I'm going to connect it to cloud just in case I want to install something like Unity Asset Manager later on to pull in projects. And while that's loading in, um, so you'll see this pull up, this will start loading, the bar will start to move to the right. And because we're doing a core project and not a robust like URP sample scene, uh, it should load pretty quick. Whereas some of the samples take a moment because there's a lot of uh, scenery that needs to load in as part of your template. One thing to note is if you are trying to open a project made by someone else, or if you made it on a different version of Unity, over here on the right hand side next to editor version, you're going to see a yellow exclamation point icon. And when you see that, what that says is, hey, this is made in a Unity version that you don't have. So you're going to click on that yellow exclamation point, and it's going to say, would you like to install this version? You hit yes, then you're good to go. It'll install. Um, I did, as my Unity 6 is opening, just get a notification that there is a an update to the editor. Um, so I'm actually not going to run in the newest, newest version, but all the UI should be the same. So I'm going to say skip new version for now, and I'm going to open this up. So this is what everything should look like by default for you. And essentially what we're looking at, uh, let's just move from top left all the way around the screen, is your usual top menu items of file, edit, once you get into assets, you can do things like create and then do a, a folder, 2D animation, etc. cetera. Um, if you wanted to actually create a game object, you'll actually do that instead of inside of here, you'll do that under game object and do game object, 3D object and create something like, let's just say a sphere. So assets creates what I would call components or assets that typically are applied to things. 
game objects themselves are created within the game objects uh, UI. And basically the way that you can think about this is that anything that lives over here for the most part is a game object. When you select each of these items, you can see that the inspector in the right hand side is changing. So it is contextual and it will change based on what type of element you have selected. So I have the main camera selected. Therefore, in the inspector, I have a transform, which is position, rotation, scale, a bunch of camera settings, an audio listener, and one script that's automatically applied, so on and so forth for a directional light, a global volume, which has some post-processing effects, and the sphere itself. So it comes in with a collider. If you needed to add something like a collider, you can add component and you can search down in here, collider, and now you could add one on and it would essentially just add on here. You can also add C sharp scripts that exact same way. You can add an audio, so on and so forth. So that's the idea is that the inspector is basically the contextual inspector window that allows you to also add components to items. You may not see this preview down here, in your 3D viewer, which is that center of the screen. If you don't, that's essentially just a preview that I have pulled up on this UI element here. Uh, the cool thing about Unity 6 is that really everything is customizable in the UI. A lot of this used to be locked in place. Um, but for example, because I have a sphere selected, it automatically is showing me the edit bounding volume for the sphere that I could then change and start to manipulate. You can also get into the view tool, move, rotate, scale, etc. right here. You do have shortcuts for a lot of this. So for example, uh, if you've ever used Blender or Maya, more so Maya or Blender with the industry standard uh, control settings, Q, W, E, and R are pretty standard for quit, move, rotate, scale. So if I click on this sphere and I hit Q, it quits that tool and takes me back to just view. If I get back into the move tool and I hit E, that's going to let me rotate. R is going to let me scale. W is going to let me move. You can use things like these squares here on the reticle to move only on one plane. So here I'm moving on the X, Z axis. This is just the Y. This is the Y, X, etc. So that's the idea. Up above that, you have things like changing if you're on the pivot or the center of an object, if you're local or global as far as where your, your reticle is, where the XYZ is looking. You also have scale, your grids if you want to turn on grids, as well as grid snapping. Then over here, you have what type of view you want. So here is wireframe draw. Here is shaded wireframe. Here is unlit shaded, so unlit draw mode. Here is lit, so that includes the, the lights. And then if I want to, you can also come over here and change out some debugging views. If I wanted to see only albedo or only emissive, etc., but I don't really want a debugging view, so I'm gonna go back to shaded draw. You also have some navigation pieces here, uh, turning off or on your audio. 2D or 3D scene view. Um, basically, do you want to show these effects in camera? And you can see each of these also have a nice tooltip. So hidden objects, click to toggle scene visibility, which layers, what scene or what camera settings you want rather inside of the scene. And then lastly, this is one that I use a ton is just which gizmos do you want to show? or oftentimes I'll turn it off. If I just wanna see exactly what something is going to look like, I'll turn off the grid, and I can really get a good feel for what that's gonna look like, whereas when I have the gizmos pulled up, sometimes it just convolutes what I'm trying to see. One brief aside is that I am using a lot of camera movements while talking. Uh, just to state those out loud, essentially holding down Alt and holding down left click on the mouse is an orbit or a rotate camera. Holding down the Alt and Right mouse button allows you to push and pull your mouse forward and backwards to zoom in. And holding down Alt and Middle mouse button allows you to pan or move the camera around laterally. 
Um, there are also alternatives where, for example, you can hold down the right mouse button and use WASD to move around the scene, almost like an FPS. Gets a little bit wild. Um, you can also click on an item and hit F to focus on it. Now, the cool thing about this, and again, I'll just point out that this bottom left right now turns on and off different components. So if I turn that off over here, the grid and snap, you can see that that piece went away. If I turn it back on, it comes back on. The neat thing is that I can come over here and I can collapse this free floating one. And I can also make any of these others free floating if I so choose. So if there's anywhere that you see that you tend to not use the screen space as much, you can absolutely come over here and start to assemble kind of your own UI of how you want Unity to look. And you can also collapse these. And you can see that when I did this, it also stopped that top menu bar from needing to be there. So it gave me a little bit more screen real estate at the top. So I'm going to collapse all these. And now this is my UI. So it's a bit cleaner. Maybe you like it this way. Maybe you don't. Um, but that's the idea, right? And all of the windows you can move around. You also down here by default have the project. So this is everything within your project. So if I have a, a sphere, we won't get into prefabs in this introductory UI video, but if I create a sphere prefab, now I can use this sphere that's in my project to populate any scene. However, the sphere is in the scene. So that's why it exists within the hierarchy of the scene. So if I had a, an outdoor scene, an indoor scene, a nature scene, I could drag this sphere into any of them, but if I don't drag a sphere into a nature scene, if I open that up, the sphere will not exist within the hierarchy yet. Um, so to create a new scene, you can always go to file, new scene, select whatever kind of scene you want. You also by default have a console where any errors are going to output and a timeline, which is generally where you'll do any animations. So um, one example, of how you would use the inspector in the timeline would be, uh, let's say you want a timeline here. So I click on sphere and you can see that the, it says, Hey, we need a director component. So now I can hit create. This is not necessarily good practice to put the timeline component on the item that you're animating. Um, so you don't want to follow this as an animation tutorial. I do have an animation tutorial separately. I can point to but let's say now I've created this item so you can see that the director has been added over here. I could now drag the sphere down and add an animation track. And you can see now an animator has been added that's within the inspector. Then I can record and I can do some animations. But that's how it works. So now as I come back into the sphere, you can see that these items exist in the inspector that I can now customize. Only other thing that I would point out before wrapping up this video is if you go into window you can get into a lot of different editors, debuggers, analysis menus, and especially the package manager. Uh, so just a couple things to call out is if I want to go into um, like the timeline, if you don't see that, you can go into sequencing and then timeline and it will open this window. Um, if I want to go into debugging or something comparable, I can go into analysis and open up my profiler. And now I can have a profiler that when I hit play is tracking the CPU utilization. And now I can have that just kind of docked here as well. Um, and then the main thing here being Pac-Man or the package manager. If you click and you open that, uh, there are some UI changes with this just this year with Unity 6. Um, and that is kind of a new UI UX inside of Pac-Man that I like a lot more. So by default, you're going to have all packages that are automatically incorporated into your project. You can also come down into the Unity registry. So if I want something like ProBuilder, which is a package that I use for white boxing and other kind of rapid prototyping, I can type in ProBuilder here, but because I have in project highlighted, the search is going to return nothing because it doesn't find ProBuilder in my project. So what I need to do is instead select the Unity registry and now it's searching ProBuilder and it says, oh yeah, ProBuilder's right here in the registry. Do you want to install that? So I'm going to hit install just to demonstrate this very briefly. Then you also have my assets. So any purchased assets that you've done, anything that's built in as well as any cloud services. 
So here's some of that cloud services stuff. So I can select that. I can install any of this directly. ProBuilder is also really cool because it pulls up in this contextual menu. So if I want to, I can expand this menu. And now I can come in here and just use ProBuilder to create a cube or whatever else I want. So let's say I say create cube, drag that out, come up. So that's the idea, right? So I'm not, I won't get into ProBuilder again. Um, that's another tutorial. But this is the idea, is that the contextual menu is now updated so that I can use these specific ProBuilder tools. I can also come in and edit ProBuilder shapes after the fact by using the edit button down here. So hopefully that's a good overview. Um, again, we walked through in Unity 6 and onward theoretically. The idea of the menu system up here at the top, opening up new windows, getting into the package manager, the hierarchy, um, one kind of fun advanced tool is the advanced search of the hierarchy. So if you want to get in here and find things only that have um, mesh render components, you can add in with this tool here, mesh renderer. Um, let me take out the text search. So that's the idea of how you could do searches in an advanced capacity. We have the 3D render view uh, it for the scene. So this is kind of your working camera. This is your game camera. So this is what you will see in the game when you hit play. If I move this main camera around in my scene view, you're gonna see the camera in the game view move. And that's because that camera is what's being used to drive the game camera at all times. So scene is kind of your editor, your working view. Game is the view that your player will have. Um, you can also get into things like window, rendering, lighting. Um, you'll typically see UI layouts where people have set them up themselves. So if you see lighting over here, that's how they got into their lighting. And you can create new lighting settings and you can get into things like adaptive pro volumes, all that that I have other tutorials on. The idea is that it's super customizable. You can open up any type of window that you need and slot it wherever you want it, as well as have contextual menus that live inside of your window or not. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.